iOS 16 is upon us, and with it, a lot of changes. Or maybe not so many changes. Maybe no changes at all. Let's discuss. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if you like videos about tech reviews, product unboxings, and filmmaking and photography tutorials, make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before, or if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So yes, WWDC 2022 is almost here, and with it, the highly anticipated iOS 16 release. So to have some fun and join in on the hype, I thought I'd make a video talking about iOS 16 with you guys and sharing with you what my iOS 16 predictions are. So let's dive right into it and start talking about something that people usually expect with a new iOS release, and that's design. And in this case, how the new iOS 16 is expected to look like. So here's the thing. I just don't see a major redesign coming this year, not only because we haven't had any leaks or rumors suggesting that one is coming, but also because I think Apple's totally cool with how things look and feel right now within iOS as it relates to design and user interface. Now, don't get me wrong, I would not mind a design change. I'd be super excited for one, actually. I still remember when I downloaded a beta to my iPhone for the first time specifically with iOS 7 because of the major redesign that that came with. But if we're being honest, I would not be heartbroken if we didn't get a redesign this year, mostly because I'm just still pretty content with the way iOS looks and feels. And I think Apple is too considering we've had the basic iOS 7 design for almost a decade now. But yes, I agree, there is definitely room for improvement, definitely some changes that could be made to better iOS. Change, just for the sake of change, usually isn't the best decision, especially when it comes to tech. And I know that well, I think Apple knows that well, so there's my prediction. As it relates to design, yes, some tweaks, some slight changes, but no major redesign in iOS 16. But something I think we will be getting, and it's a prediction this year that's probably my boldest, is an always on display. A new software feature that allows the display of the iPhone to be, well, always on. If you're not aware of what an always on display is, basically it's the phone's lock screen always remaining on, but dimmed and with a black background, showing just the time and the notifications of the device. Yes, I know, you can just tap to wake the iPhone and see all this info, but it's not quite the same as just glancing down at the phone and seeing that same information that you want to see without having to tap it. Just saying. And this is something that almost every Android device now has, not to compare, but yes, also yes, to compare. But that is why I am comparing here because I do think now is the perfect time for Apple to implement and always on display within iOS 16 especially considering the somewhat other minor upgrades we're expecting to get. But also, the hardware in the latest iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max are now equipped to actually handle an always-on display. Two things are essentially required for an always-on display to actually make sense in an Apple device, and that's an OLED display and a variable refresh rate. We've had an OLED display in the iPhone for several years now, but one thing we haven't always had is a variable refresh rate. We've been at 60 hertz for quite a long time, and now we have a variable refresh rate that could go all the way from 120 hertz as slow as 10 hertz, again, in the newest iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. And to be completely honest here, I was actually Pretty darn surprised I have not seen this debuted alongside the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max during the keynote announcing the two phones. Apple did specifically call out and mention, obviously, ProMotion, but also the variable refresh rate, so it was like the perfect opportunity for Apple to slide it in there as well, but we didn't get it. That's why I'm thinking with iOS 16, it could be the star of the show. iOS 16 could come with a software upgrade that allows the iPhone 13 Pro to actually utilize that 10 hertz refresh rate with a dimmed OLED black background on the lock screen, which would allow it to be a always on display, theoretically not having a major negative impact on battery life. The hardware's there, the software isn't, even though the hardware and software have been there in the Apple Watch for at least the last couple of years. So, I wouldn't be surprised. My prediction here, although it's a bold prediction, always on display coming your way in iOS 16, but specifically for the iPhone 13 Pro and future Pro-level iPhones. 
because they have the variable refresh rates. But another prediction I am going to make here has to do with health features and specifically new health features within the Apple Health app that could set the stage for more health tracking features we get on the Apple Watch later this year. And I just gotta say, that's one of the cool things about new iOS releases and updates. They could sometimes hint at new features we might be getting in the new iPhone or other devices like the Apple Watch later in the fall. So what specifically am I thinking we'll get here with new health features in iOS 16? Well, it's kind of hard to say, but I am thinking the first thing we're gonna get is a more user-friendly health app experience. The thing is, we already have so much health tracking data that is on the iPhone within the health app already, it's just that a lot of it is difficult to really fully understand and easily organize within the app. I think the Apple Health app is really powerful and it has a lot of potential, but to me, it just seems like every time you open it, it's just kind of slamming you with information that's somewhat overwhelming and makes you not want to or even know how to actually take the time to organize all of it. Expanding on that, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see the Health app actually carrying over and expanding to other Apple devices as well. I guess, technically, this wouldn't be considered part of an iOS prediction because it's more of an iPad OS prediction and Mac OS prediction, but I do think it counts here because the Health app originated in iOS and it could be now furthered into other devices. For example, just like we get sleep or bedtime reminders on the iPhone and how we get stand reminders on the Apple Watch, perhaps we could get some kind of break reminders reminding us to take a break from looking at our Mac display for extended periods of time. Just a thought. And this would of course also suggest that we get a dedicated health app and health section on the Mac and on the iPad. So we could just take a quick glance at everything we need to see when it comes to health. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself here. This is an iOS predictions video, not an iPad OS or Mac OS. Stay focused, BMAC. But one thing I'm not expecting here within this category are any kind of completely groundbreaking new health features within iOS in general that usually would require additional hardware that if we are gonna be getting anything like that would likely be announced in the fall. So that leaves my prediction of an iOS 16 health app reorganization, perhaps the addition of a few more data points that we could track using existing hardware, and of course the carryover of the health app to both iPad OS and Mac OS. But what does this leave us with? The question of when and what? Meaning, when can we expect to get iOS 16 and what devices will iOS 16 be available on? What I am expecting is an official general public release of iOS 16, obviously in the fall, if you have to pull my leg, I'd say September 20th, that's my exact date prediction. But I'm also expecting, per usual, the beta, the first beta of iOS 16 to be available on the WWDC keynote day, which this year happens to be June 6th, 2022. But those are the dates. What devices can you expect to actually be able to get iOS 16 on? My prediction is that you're only gonna be able to get iOS 16 on, drum roll, iPhone 7 and newer devices. Which means, unfortunately, I do think iOS support will then be dropped for the iPhone 6S and iPhone SE first generation users. RIP iPhone 6S and iPhone SE 1, but you guys did get a release of iOS 15 last year, which was somewhat unexpected. But I do think this year, unfortunately, the iPhone 7 is going to be the cutoff, mostly because the iOS 16 software is going to require the A10 chip or newer. And I truly, sincerely hope that doesn't break too many hearts out there, but those are your dates and predictions from your boy for iOS 16. So to wrap all of this up, conclusion, I know, nothing super groundbreaking here, nothing too bold in my predictions, but that is what I have. I'm expecting just minor design changes, I'm expecting an always on display, and I'm expecting new health features. Also with those release dates and devices we just talked about. I hope I'm wrong, I hope iOS 16 is a lot more exciting than all of us are expecting it to be, but I'm just working with the information we have here and based on what's been going on in the Apple sphere, the Apple world, I think that's pretty much all we're gonna be getting. I hope I'm wrong. But please do me a favor, comment down below your predictions for what we'll get with iOS 16 announced at WWDC 2022. I hope I'm missing something. Hopefully there's something blatantly obvious out there that we're probably gonna get in iOS 16 that I didn't talk about that you could comment down below. And granted, come to think of it, I could actually be totally wrong on every single one of these predictions, which would make this video a complete troll-worthy laughing stock for my entire channel moving forward. But I have confidence in my predictions, yes I do. Well, to an extent. I will see you guys in my next video. Or maybe Apple's just gonna be like, you know what? No, no new iOS this year. Don't feel like doing it at WWDC. No iOS 16, maybe next year. Can you imagine that? I'm pretty sure the internet would break. 
Our brains would explode and the world would cave in. Shivered thinking about that. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope we get iOS 16. My goodness.